Hi, I'm George, and we'll be taking a look at some new features here inside of ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate 2021. And if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and check out my channel for more product reviews and demos. ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate 2021 is a major upgrade. There are lots of new performance enhancements in here and massive speed increases, 100% increases in a lot of cases. Also, if you like using this program, this is actually is my personal favorite program to use instead of Adobe's Lightroom program, then you'll like this new feature in that ACDC can now import Picasa and Lightroom face data right into your catalog here, your library here inside of ACDC. It can save you a lot of time if you're making the move from Lightroom or Picasa over to ACDC. There's also now support for Camera Raw from GoPro. That's a, a big deal right there. There's also some new ways of working with text. You can put text on a path and text in a paragraph frame. That really expands how you can use text inside of this program. There are lots of other great improvements in here, but I'm gonna save some of this stuff for a later video. This time around, I wanted to talk about my two favorite new features here inside of ACDC 2021. We have new color wheel adjustment and a new set of tone wheel adjustments. Let's take a look at those. Let's first switch back to manage here to see how fast this program runs. Isn't that great? Just instantaneous practically and I'll choose a picture right here let's take this and open this up in edit mode okay now the first one I want to show you here is the new color wheel and that's right down here under the color section right there color wheel now this is very easy to use that's what I like about this it's an easy to use tool very intuitive very very natural feeling way of working with, with color now to explain this whole thing in here we first have a color wheel here this is showing you your color range that is currently selected not the color range of the whole picture, but the color range that is selected. This is kind of a default color range in here. If I pull my arrow over the window here, notice that I get a little eyedropper there that shows me the color values. Right now it's red, green, blue color values. Let's say I wanted to change the color of these petals in here. I'll come in here and find this kind of a medium tone. I'll click on that and notice how the color wheel had shifted around just a little ways higher to grab that particular color. So it's looking at this range of colors in here. Once you have a range selected, you can then come down here and make all kinds of adjustments like smoothness, saturation, hue, brightness, contrast, color balance. This is still a quick hue shift so you can see that. There it is. It just shifts right there. So it's that easy to use. Notice that our sliders are easy. You can also type in a number over here if you want to. I'll just put that back to zero again. Let's say you wanted to narrow this down and not change anything up here, but you wanted to just change what's down here. Very easy to do. The very top of here we have a brush and this gives you the ability to paint in and it just masks out and only shows the color change in the area that you want to have the color change shown let's say i wanted to have every other flower petal changed in color i'll use this one right here what we're seeing right now is just the layer mask and i'm being just a little bit sloppy on this on purpose and i'll show you how you can clean that up in just a second but there we go there's our color mask showing in here they can show or hide your color mask right here show or hide there it is I'll just hide that and let's do a hue shift I'll go more bluish there it is so it's only showing that shift inside of that area that we just painted now up here I didn't mind being a little sloppy because of course the colors in here didn't really match that background but if you wanted to clean that up a little bit I'll just show a color stroke again that bit right in here all you have to do is go up here and then invert the brush strokes and then come in and paint back in the opposite direction. So you can really fine tune this. Of course, if you use the wheel on your mouse, you can adjust your brush size that easily as well for real fine detail on this. Okay, I'll just reverse that again. You know, I'll hide our brush strokes and there's that color change. Let's just add in another leaf right down here, another flower petal. Notice that if I don't show the masking color strokes, masking strokes, I can just paint right on the image and then see the color change happen directly. Makes it very easy to use, as I said before, a very intuitive way of making your color changes in here. I'll just do every other flower petal. Just get this one right down here. I need to go smaller. That's just the wheel again on the mouse. Just roll the wheel up or down to adjust the size. And since I'm working in a specific color range, I don't need to worry about those outside colors or they're not included in the range I'm working in. There we go. Very easy to do. Now you can adjust the color range. Simply grab that radial right here and you can pull that around. You can expand this either direction. 
So again, you can kind of fine tune the color that it's grabbing from either side that way and use that to help get rid of any little haloing around the outside, things like that. You also can control the range of the color in here. Notice we have no saturation in the middle and full saturation on the outside edge of the circumference, this outside band. I can actually pull that in and limit this to a lower saturation or pull the middle in and limit this to higher saturation. So you can come in here and even control a very small range color-wise and also saturation-wise on both ends. So it gives you just a wide range to control your color selections. You can also, of course, save this as a preset and then use the same color settings for other projects. So real easy to use, as you can see. You can also, if you want to make masks up here using gradients, linear gradient or a radial gradient, you can adjust the width in here Feathering on the edge just kind of softens the edge down. If you're using a stylus, you can adjust your pressure right here. And smart brushing here will help you find color brightness or a magic selector in there. Now down below, down here, we can add in additional color ranges. Just click on this, you're going to add in a secondary color range. You can also remove any of these just by clicking on the X over here. It just removes that section. Now here we can auto preview the selected range or not preview our range. Right here, you can invert the colors. So now I have everything selected except for that range. And right here, we can preview the mask. So you can take a fast look there at where it's masking, just like that. Just click on that and hold that for a second, and it gives you that mask preview. Now, if you're happy with everything, just click on Apply right down here. If you don't like this, just click on Cancel. It then undoes all that. Or you can click on the Reset right up here and reset this back to the beginning and start over again. So as you can see, very easy to come in here and do this. Right now we're also pixel targeting. We have blending mode options right here and opacity options as well. So you can, again, you can really fine tune this tool to get exactly the effect that you want. I'm just gonna choose apply, there we go. And I'll choose done. Now will close down that panel. So as you can see, very easy to use that color wheel. Now, another real nice tool I like over here is the tone wheels. Let's just change our picture. I'll choose a different picture right down here. I'm just going to discard those changes. There we go. So here we have a nice picture. It has a lot of warms in the background, warms in our flesh tones, and the cools over here. Using the tone wheels, these will be used for adjusting the overall tones of a picture, kind of like doing cinematic looks, things like that. Again, very easy to control. In this case, we have three color wheels in here, one for highlights, one for midtones, and one for shadows. And there's also up here a brush. So again, we can come in and make a mask to control where that is happening. I'm just going to click on cancel. As we saw here on the last image, it did everything on that one layer. If you want to do layering in here, have the effect on one layer and then your regular image on another layer, which I want to do here just as a safety, simply go over here to your layers, right click and duplicate layer, and then do your control up here on your new layer. That gives your original as a safety. You can always go back to that if you need to, if anything gets messed up. So here we are, let's go ahead and do a tone control in here, and we'll change the color of this background in here to more of a bluish tone, leaving her in warmth and everything else in cools. Okay, start off by grabbing our tone wheels right here. There we go. And notice we have a color section in here and then controls left and right hand side. Saturation, this is light and dark, pretty easy to see here. Notice I can actually move my overall tone around just by grabbing this little spot here and moving this dot around and I can get a nice kind of a sense of our colors in there very quickly and easily with that. Now I can also, as you can see here, adjust the saturation level, full saturation on the edge and then no saturation in the middle. So you have control in there. So higher saturation up towards the edge. You can also control this just by grabbing this little control here, this little handle and move your color around here. And then we can bring in the amount of color over in here. This again is your saturation level up at the top, more color down at the bottom, less color. So you have that control in there. So I'll just push this up here. We're doing mid-tones right now. I'm ignoring the girl and just paying attention to the background. Here's our mid-tones. Let's come down and put some blues here into our shadows. Now you can also lighten and darken that. I'm going to darken the shadows down a little bit in here. We'll bring our mid-tones down a little bit. Now a lot of this is in light tones. So let's just grab some blue tone in here for the highlights like that. And that's full saturation. And there's our saturation control in there. And let's bring those highlights down a bit as well. Let's kind of dim those down just a touch. We've cooled off the whole back area here, giving it kind of a nice bluish tone in there. And then to bring the girl back in again, all we have to do is use our brush to select the area that we want to have displayed. So let's go up here to our brush right there. And again, I can use the wheel on the mouse to control the size of the brush. Notice up here on the brush controls that the nib width is changing as I use the wheel. And then if I paint in here, it shows that new color 
and I'm going to either show my strokes or not right there. There we go. And I'll just paint this in and I'll come around relatively far away there from the girl's figure. We'll come in and do that close in in just a bit here. And just work around and very quickly create a two-tone picture in here. Now I can leave the couch as is. That's fine. Now I'll bring my nib size down just a little bit and I'll just come right along the edge of the hair in here. And we'll get some of that brought in. Now, of course, I also could do the same kind of a trick with multiple layers and layer masks. You know, whichever way you like, it's up to you. But this is a real fast, real easy way to do this. It'd be not quite as accurate as a carefully made layer mask, but for our use, very fast. You can, of course, also use this on a layer mask. No reason not to. Let's come in here. Now, coming in a little bit under her figure there, we'll fix that up in just a second. And then come along the edge up here of the couch. Come in a bit like that. Just a you know, purposeful mistake right there. So I can show you that little bit. There we go. Now, just like we did with a color wheel, you can come in here and reverse your mask, and that allows you to clean up those little edges. Just come on the inside in here, and then paint back in on the inside. So you can work on both sides, you know, both directions. You can clean that up. Okay, so reverse that again. There we go. Now it's too saturated in here. So I'll pull the saturation in here on my lights a little bit, or just use this control on the left-hand side here. Let's just pull our saturation down on all of our tones. There we go. Looks a bit better. So we've now cooled off that wall in the background very easily using these new tone wheels over here. Now when you're happy with this, just come down and click on Apply. Now again, just like we had in the color wheel, we also can come in and adjust our blending here. You can blend this in using different blend modes. Here's a multiply mode, for instance. There's a hard light mode, so you can blend, and you can also adjust the opacity, so you can bring just a little bit of the effect in here, or a lot of the effect, it's up to you. We'll go ahead now and click Apply, and then click Done. It takes us back to our original image, and we've now placed that on this layer up here. So here's the original, and here's this layer. So using that brush for that mask is very easy to do, as you can see. Another way would be to just colorize the whole layer, don't use the mask, and then on the layer here, Use your layer mask at this point, put a layer mask in here, and then do all of your work on your layer mask here, which would actually give you even more control. I just wanted to show you that you can do all of that stuff on that one tool if you want to, right on the tone wheels. Now, notice something else about this. When I go back to our tone wheels, notice that they've all reset here back to their zero positions. So it doesn't stay in the last position that you had these in. It gives you a new set of controls when you click on this again. Just keep that in mind. Click on cancel. There you go. Those are my two favorite new features here in ACDC 2021, the new color wheel and also the tone wheels. It gives you a great new, very interactive and intuitive way of working with color in your picture. And again, there are a lot of other features and I'll do another video or two on those as well in just a little bit. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe and check out my channel for more product reviews and demos. And I'll see you later.